So new people, how are you all doing? And welcome back to a new video. So yesterday, the club finally released the 2020-21 retained list. I did have another video planned for yesterday, but obviously that's now had to be knocked back because there's some fresh news coming out of SE7 as we now find out who has left the club and who is being offered a new contract. So we're going to be going over that today. We're going to be reacting to it. We're going to be finding out who is being released, who is being offered a new deal, who is being contracted to the club till next year and talking about the academy players as well, who we could expect to see maybe involved in the team next year, who's been offered pro contracts and who has been released. So without any further hesitation, people, let's dive straight into the video and we're going to kick things off by reading the article of our retain list. So it begins with a few quotes from owner Thomas Sangard and manager Nigel Adkins. Thomas Sangard has revealed he's looking forward to his first full summer in charge at the club. The club's owner explained in an interview with Charlton TV that will air in full on Tuesday evening's end of season show that discussions around the squad for next season are ongoing. He said, we have to get into deciding what players we keep and what players we get in. We're already deep into those discussions. It is obviously exciting and also very decisive on how we are going to play and how well we'll do next season. The Addicts finished the season in fine form, losing in just one of their final 15 games. Didn't actually realise our form was that good towards the end of the season. Pretty decent, boys. Anyway, off topic. Missing out on a playoff position on a goal difference. Charter manager Nigel Adkins said, our job is about building a squad that puts us in the best position for the 2021-22 season. We finished the season well and have a core of good, hungry players, so I'm looking forward to seeing how we can progress over the next few weeks. Sangard, who is targeting promotion, added, we have a number of players that are out of contract. A few of those we'll try to see if we can negotiate for them to stay at the club. There are a couple of the loan players that we are also interested in to see if they can become permanent signings. Other than that, we are wide open on what we are looking at, whether it is loan players from the Premier League clubs or positive permanent signings. We also have some great talents in the academy and we'll continue to develop that and give those players a chance too. Dead Yoshi Larger, Darren Prattley and Andrew Shinney, whose contracts are set to expire, will not be offered a new deal. Those three, we already knew, were going to be released as they announced it via their social media platforms. Adkins said, I would like to thank Deji, Darren and Andrew for everything they have done during their time at the club. The three of them are excellent professionals with great attitudes. We wish them the best for the future. Darren Prattley appeared in 111 games for the club, playing an important role in the Addicts' promotion to the Championship in 2018-19, including a vital goal against Doncaster Rovers in the playoff semi-final. Dead Yoshilaja played 47 times for Charlton during two seasons at the club, while Andrew Shinney played 29 games after joining Charlton from Luton Town, initially on loan at the start of this season. The club can confirm that contract discussions with Ben Amos, Chuck Zanike, Jake Falstakaski, Adam Matthews, Jason Pierce, and Ben Watson are ongoing ahead of the expiration of their contracts this month. So they're the players that have been offered new deals by the club. Akin Famuo, Ian Martson, Matt Smith, Liam Miller, and Jaden Stockley have returned to their parent clubs following the completion of their loans. Adkins said, we'd like to thank Akin, Ian, Matt, Liam, and Jaden for their contributions this season. They have all impressed with their work rates and commitment to our cause during their time here and have played an important part in what we have been able to achieve this season. Marcus Madison and Erhun Oztuma, who have both been away from the club on loan, obviously that being Bolton and Bristol Rovers respectively, will not be offered new contracts. The club would like to wish them the best for the future. And to wrap up the retain list, they go obviously go in to talk about the academy and what is going on with those players. So Charlton have taken up the option of an extra year of the contracts on under 23s Wasim Alcheria, Billy French, Hadi Gandor and Lucas Ness. So those four obviously were out of contracts, but they have now had one year extensions triggered by the club, so they will be staying. The club have also offered new contracts to Charles Clayden, Ben Dempsey, Nathan Harness, Nathan Harvey, Jay Mingi, Joel Powell and James Vennings. Second year scholars Terrell Ajimang, Jimmy Appiah, Nazir Bakarin, Mason Burstow, Dylan Gavin, Jeremy Santos have all been offered pro contracts. Under 18's captain Richard Chin, who has been on a extended schoolboy registration, has been offered a pro contract. The club can confirm the following under 23 players have left the club following the expiration of their contracts with Charlton. Richard Afrain Kesse, Kasim Aidu, Eddie Alsop, Freddie Barton, Junior Quaterna, Harry Taylor, 
and Luca Vega. Charlton Athletic would like to thank all those players who have departed and wish them all the very best in their future careers. Now we'll jump into my thoughts around what's happening around the squad and the dealings that is going on. So I guess we'll start off with the senior squad and we'll start off with the players that have been offered new deals. Obviously six players have been offered new contracts by the club. Amos, Anike, Fulstakaski, Matthews, Pierce and Watson. Now of those six players, I'll be completely honest with you, only half of them I'm actually impressed with the fact that we've given them new deals and I'd actually properly keep. And that is Chucks, Jake and Adam. The other three I'm not particularly fussed by. Obviously, Chucks and EK was the main one. You know, he was the main priority that we had to sort out. There are some Charlton fans that genuinely would let Chucks go. And to be honest with you, I have no idea what these people are thinking. You know, 15 goals in League One, our top scorer. Yes, his fitness is a problem. Yes, he can't play the full 90 minutes. But still, he's a massive, massive player for us. And obviously, that fitness issue can be worked on. Chucks has been offered a new contract. To my understanding, Sheffield Wednesday are interested in him. And they are keeping a lot of tabs on him. So obviously, we need to make sure that this deal is very solid, you know, and we need to make sure that we can time down. Jake Fulstakaski, I'm not entirely surprised that he's been offered a new deal. Obviously, he is out with another ACL injury and won't be playing until the new year, so he will miss half of this season anyway. And Adam Matthews as well, I'm very happy that he's been offered a new deal as well. Obviously, Nigel Adkins played him over Chris Guntel. Obviously, under Boyo, Guntel was the favourite right back over Matthews, but I think Adkins realised that Matthews is the better fullback in that position, so... Yeah, very happy that Matthews has been offered the new deal. Now, in terms of the other three, Amos, Pierce and Watson, obviously they are ageing players. I wouldn't mind it if they stayed, but I also wouldn't mind it if they left because like they're ageing players and they're not really going to improve us. I mean, Ben Amos out of those three is probably the one that I would most like to keep. He kept like 16 slash 17 clean sheets over the season, so that obviously can't be ignored. That is a pretty good season for him, but he has made a lot of mistakes this season. You know, he's been caught out quite a lot, especially from shots outside the box the amount of goals that he's let in from outside the area this year has been absolutely ridiculous and I do think that we can do better than Amos but he is a useful player to have around the squad. I do hope that our second choice keeper Ashley Maynard Brewer though is given more minutes you know obviously he, he didn't play any league football this season so I hope that next season he will get a fair chance you know um, alongside Ben Amos. Now in terms of the other two Pierce and Watson, Pierce for me he has been a very good servant of the football club and to be totally honest with you, I do expect him to sign a new contract and even finish his career with the club. But I just think that he's passed it at this point, to be honest with you. I just think that he has gone as far as he can and he's offered us all he can at this stage. And I expect him to sign the contract anyway, which is, you know, I'm not going to be particularly keen on it but to be honest I'm not fussed if he leaves nor am I fussed if he stays because he is a useful squad player to have around the team but that's it to be honest with you and the same could be said for Ben Watson now this one I don't understand at all I know obviously he's got a year left in his contract he's got a one-year option to extend um past this 12 months that is obviously set to expire I don't get this one because we're keeping him and we're letting Prattley go. And to be honest with you, Prattley is miles the better player than Watson. Watson has been very poor this season, in my opinion. He has been very, very below average. And definitely not the player that we thought we'd signed from Forrest. Amos, Pierce and Watson, in my opinion, are squad players. They are players that we can't necessarily rely on to start games because they're aging and they're not going to improve us. So that's my thoughts on the players that have been offered new contracts. Now, in terms of the released players, obviously we knew Darren Prattley, Andrew Shinney and Deja Shalaja had all left the club. Obviously, they announced via social media. Darren Prattley obviously announcing it via LinkedIn. You know, there's something very Darren Prattley about that. But I was quite surprised, but at the same time, time you know kind of the right decision because you know Prattley is 36 you know he's very much getting on a bit now but I, I stand by this though I'd much rather have kept Prattley than than Watson you know and uh, I am disappointed in that sense but you know Prattley I think it was the right time for him to move on as I say I think we need to improve our squad and we need to get like a younger team and obviously Prattley doesn't fit that bill so you know, it makes sense that he has been let go. And obviously, we have to say that he has been a very, very valiant servant of this football club. 111 appearances, you know, scored seven goals, including that all-important playoff semi-final goal against Doncaster, which will live forever in my mind. And then obviously, the other two, Andrew Shinney and Deja Shalaja, I saw these two come in. You know, I, I knew full well that these two were going to be leaving the club. Obviously, Shinney, I was 
a bit surprised by this one, mainly because of the lack of game time he got under Adkins. Obviously, under Lee Bowyer, I would say that he was our best midfielder alongside Jake Falls Tukaski. But then, obviously, when Adkins come in, he gave Gilby a chance. You know, he was playing Prattley and Watson, obviously, as holding midfielders. Morgan was getting some games. And Shinny was just left on the bench, and he was just left there. And it kind of just left the Charlton fans to think, yeah, Adkins doesn't like Shinny. So it made me think, yeah, Shinny is definitely going to be leaving the club. He's another aging player, you know, 31 years of age. So I can understand fully why he has left the club. Obviously, Adkins, I'd expect to bring in some more younger midfielders into the side. But let's take nothing away from Shinny, though. He's done very well this season. Again, I wish him all the best. And as for Oshilaja, again, I'm not surprised with this one whatsoever. Obviously, our fourth choice centre half, we can definitely do a lot better than him. So not entirely surprised at all that he has left. Again, like Shinny, was barely involved in Adkins' side and Adkins' plan. So, yeah, not surprised by that whatsoever. And then, obviously, we have the other two that were permanent players, obviously, that have left the club. They were on loan uh, throughout this season, of course, with Bolton and Bristol Rovers. That, of course, being Marcus Madison and Erhun Oztuma. Marcus Madison has actually found himself a new club already. He's signed for Spalding United, who are in the seventh tier of English football. So he's fallen all the way from League One seventh tier must be the Isthmian League or something like that I don't know but obviously we know the story around Marcus Madison you know he's fallen out of love with football you know struggling with his mental health I wish him all the best you know I know a lot of people have been taking the piss out of him but in this situation I wish him nothing but the best I hope that he does you know find the love back for football you know because he is a good player and as for Erhanus Tuma I mean yeah not surprised by this one he just did not work out for us obviously moved to the championship uh, from Bolton had one good performance against Nottingham Forest and then just completely fell off from there. Was loaned out to Bristol Rovers this season when a lot of people expected him to be a key figure in our side this year. And obviously he went to Bristol Rovers and they obviously finished bottom of the league and he struggled to get game time there. So... Yeah, Oztuma, I'd expect him to be playing League 2 football next season, to be honest with you. I mean, if he's finishing bottom of League 1, I don't expect any League 1 side, apart from maybe a newly promoted side, to want to take him. And then, obviously, the five loans, Famawo, Martin, Smith, Miller and Stockley have all gone back to their parent clubs, Norwich, Chelsea, Arsenal, Liverpool and Preston, respectively. And one interesting thing we have to take from the club's article is that there are a couple of the loan players that we are interested in signing. Now, Jaden Stockley, I think, is definitely definitely going to be one of them you know he's said all the right things obviously he said in articles previously that he would love to come back to the club and I see this as a massive possibility you know of him falling out of favour at Preston you know Preston have obviously Emil Rees, Sean Maguire, Lewis Moult and now Ched Evans ahead of him in the squad so he's now their fifth choice striker so I would not be surprised at all if Stockley was to make the move to Charlton and I would take him happily and the other one I would hope to be Akin Famuo. You know, he's been absolutely superb this season on loan from Norwich. Norwich are obviously playing Premier League football next season, so I strongly doubt that he will be playing top flight football next season. So now is the perfect opportunity for us to get a solid offer on the table and bring him in permanently. So yeah, in terms of the senior team's retain list, I've not really got many complaints in terms of the release players. Obviously, Prattley is the only dodgy one in there for me. I'd rather have kept him over Watson. And obviously, in terms of the players that have been offered new contracts, Anike, Forstakowski and Matthews, great that they've been offered new deals and hopefully they will sign them. As for the other three, obviously they are aging players and I do think that they we can do a lot better than those guys. But I, I fully expect all three of them to sign new deals. We'll speak briefly about the academy players. Four players from the academy have had their contracts extended by a further 12 months. That obviously is Alcheria, French, Gandor and Ness. Now, it is to be seen if those four are going to be involved in the squad next season in terms of the senior team. Obviously, Alcheria has just come back from uh, an injury, so hopefully he can have a good season next year. Lucas Ness, I think, has been in and around the squad a couple of times in the Papa John's Trophy previously. And the same with Hadi Gandor, you know, there's a lot of potential there. Obviously, Lebanese winger. And so obviously, in terms of the players that have been offered new deals, you know, you've got Clayden, who's done well uh, for the academy this year. Ben Dempsey, who was a player that I actually felt that he should be moved on, to be honest with you, because obviously, He's been on loan with Woking this season and I don't really rate Dempsey that much and I didn't think that he had a future here, but he's been offered a new deal, so it is to be seen if he will stay with the club and obviously the others like Nathan Harness, who is our, uh, I guess you could say, our third choice keeper behind uh, Maynard Brewer. Harvey, I don't really know him. I've not really known much of him, to be honest with you, so yeah, good thing that he's been offered a new deal. Jay Mingi, obviously a very decent centre-back coming through the academy, obviously scored against Leighton Orient in the Papa John's Trophy this season, so again, a player with a lot of potential and also 
Joel Powell and James Vinnings. You know, I'm happy with those guys that they've been offered new deals and hopefully they can, you know, potentially get a run around the squad this season. In terms of the pro contracts, I'll mention some of them briefly. Obviously, Nazir Bakrin, I watched the under-18s uh, semi-final against Birmingham uh, the other day. Uh, Bakrin and the other guy, Deji Elawere, I think his name was. Those two centre-backs were so composed and they looked so good. And then obviously Mason Burstow, who scored two goals against uh, Birmingham, obviously, to send us into the uh, regional playoff final against Wigan on Friday. He obviously got a brace, obviously, the, fight, the last one being a last minute, which is obviously great for him, but a bit of a kick in the teeth for me because my pitch hire game got rescheduled from Friday to Saturday, but we move on. All jokes aside, congratulations to Burstow. You know, he, he really did play well in that game against Birmingham. I was impressed with him, so yeah, bright future ahead for him. And obviously, other players like Dylan Gavin, Jeremy Santos was also in that under-18s game, and obviously Richard Chin, their captain. In terms of the players that are leaving the club, I must admit, there were some that I was quite surprised by. You know, Kasim Ido, he played quite a couple of times in pre-season. I think he, again, was in around the bench, like Lucas Ness uh, for the uh, Papa John's Trophy game, so I was quite surprised to see him go. I was very surprised with the departure of Eddie Allsop. You know, he has just come back from a very, very bad injury, so I expected him, you know, to be, you know, given at least another 12 months to prove his worth, but he's leaving, which I'm rather surprised by but the one that I'm most gutted about is Junior Quaterna. You know, he is a player that I very much rated from the academy. I remember last season when we were in the championship in pre-season against the likes of Welling, Ebbsfleet, Colchester and that. I really, you know, I re he really caught my eye and I thought that he was a very good player with a bright future within this squad. But, you know, I guess it wasn't to be. Maybe moving him on was for the best of his career. You know, he's got to find a club now where he's going to get regular football. Hopefully he can find somewhere, you know, maybe at national league level, potentially league two. Now, obviously with that, finding out who is going to be leaving in the club who is going to be offered new contracts and obviously the news with the academy it does show that there is a lot of work that needs to be done with this squad obviously currently right now there are only 10 players that are officially contracted to the club for the 2021-22 season and they are as follows Ashley Maynard Brewer, Chris Gunter, Ryan Innes, Ben Purrington, Albie Morgan, Alex Gilby, Dialang Jaisimi, Connor Washington, Ronnie Schwartz and then the 10th one who I've included a player that seemingly everybody has forgotten about Josh Davison. I hope that he is a player that gets regular football this season. Obviously, he has proven this season that he can play at a professional level. Obviously, he was on loan with Woking and he was firing on all cylinders there and then got a move to Forest Green, who are obviously battling promotion this season against Newport County in the playoff semi-finals. Obviously, didn't get off to the best of starts, losing 2-0 last night. But, you know, Davison, I do hope that he gets regular football this season. Let's say, hypothetically, that the six players that have been offered new deals for the, by the club sign them. That's 16 players. So you can definitely tell that there is a lot of work that needs to be done. The defence looks completely shot to bits. You know, we've only got one centre-back now with Ryan Innes, and obviously if Pierce is to sign, that's two. So we need two more to come into the side. Obviously, right-back, if Matthews signs his contract, obviously right-back is technically fine with Matthews and Gunter. Gunter, I think, has to be nowhere near the starting eleven. personally. I think Matthews has to be starting over him 100%. And to be honest with you, I would not be fussed at all if Gunter even is to be moved on um, in the summer. Obviously, we've only got one left-back, Ben Purrington, who we can't really rely on to start games you know we need to be having that competition in that side the midfield though is completely shot to bitch you know we've only got Morgan and Gilby contracted to the club we've only got one winger as well in Dialang Jaisimi as for the attack you know we've got Washington we've got Schwartz we've got Davison if he is to be used and obviously Anike that the majority of our attack from this season just gone will be remaining for next season and to be totally honest with you I do see that as a problem because the strikers that we've got are not scoring consistently. They're not scoring consistently over the course of the season. Obviously, Jaden Stockley was, you could say, scoring consistently. But, you know, the tactic that we were playing with Stockley, you know, smashing the ball forward to him and praying, you know, it's just not good football. You know, it's not good tactics. And I think that we need some flair going forward. And we certainly need someone to be scoring consistently. You know, we can't rely on Chucks coming off the bench for the last half hour to save us. You know, we need to be scoring goals and starting strong. And, you know... It's going to be interesting to see what we do in the summer. You know, who are we going to move on if anyone is going to be moved on? You know, is Chucks going to leave to Sheffield Wednesday? You know, we'd take that into account. Is Davison actually going to be involved? What's going to happen with Ronnie Schwartz? You know, he's under contract for the next two months. And out of the strikers, he is the most likely candidate to be moved on, which is harsh on his part, you know, because he's barely been here. You know, he's barely played. 
and obviously he's got pregnant wife in Denmark and he's had a lot of things go against him at his time with the club but you have to say we may have to sacrifice him in the summer window to bring in a solid striker to score consistently I'm rather surprised that Adkins was saying that we've got a good core group of players to be honest with you from the majority of this season I don't think we do I haven't seen that, you know, I haven't seen a good hungry core of players. The truth is a lot of work needs to be done with this squad. We need to get a younger and more hungrier and more fiery group of players into this squad. We need to get that average age down. We need to avoid the loan market as much as physically possible, in my opinion. For far too long, we have signed, you know, the most amount of loans that we can have. There's been no stability within that side. In my opinion, we need to be utilising the full transfer market. We need to be going in and signing long-term signings like Dialang Jaisimi, you know, he's obviously contracted until 2024, the first signing under Thomas Sangard that feels like a long-term ambitious signing. We need players like that, signings like that, and need to avoid the loan market as much as possible. You know, bring in like one or two loans, but no more than that. You know, we need stability within this side. And let's also not forget the academy players. You know, there is a great opportunity for these academy boys to get regular game time. Whether they will, you know, the likes of Alcheria are French, Gandor, Ness, who have obviously been off, who are obviously staying at the club, and obviously those have been offered new deals. You know, Vennings, Dempsey, Powell, are they going to get game time? And let's also not forget players that are already there. You know, Aaron Henry, who I think is the hottest talent in the academy right now. And let's also not forget, you know, Charlie Barker. It's all focused on the summer, man. It's going to be so exciting, you know, to see who's going to be brought in, who's going to be let go. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and turn on those post notifications so you're notified of when I post. What do you guys think of the retain list? Let me know in the comments below. This has been Tyler Ronitson. Have a nice day, and I will see you all in the next video. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then.